Hi everyone, this is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. I'm using a 2000 tick chart and a 21 EMA. I'm also trading the E-mini NASDAQ on a 1000 tick chart, also with a 21 EMA. And so starting on the ES, we have the overnight high up here, the overnight low down here. These are our key levels for the day. And I started trading around eight central time, which is as we were pushing up right here, right before this drop down. And so we have this measured move in play because we have a push down. Let me push up here and we get these two legs up that forms our overnight low right there. Now, this measured move up is still in play, and so even though right here we're getting a very bearish push down, and from the top it's a failed second entry, it's not off of any clear resistance. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have perfect context either because we just, we just came off of the overnight low. And when you come off one side, you can expect price to attempt to reach the other side. Now, you do have two attempts there, but the measured move is still in play. It still has quite a bit left in it, and so, you know, it's basically just a mixture of the measured move is in play, plus we're coming off the overnight low. That prevented me from entering short right there. Um, if we had just gotten a good lower high, something, or a failed second entry that's just confirming below the EMA, um, then we could have got something. Um, you know, this lower high right here, you know, that's too small picture for me. I would want to see a very clear, a clear lower high, not just a tick higher. Um, you know, a clear swing separated with bodies. So it's just not perfect there for me. Um, we push on lower here, you know, just because it works here doesn't mean it's gonna work next time, but we reach that overnight low. The overnight levels act as magnets, price is attracted back to them, but after they're reached, you can expect price to attempt to make a couple legs off of them. And so when we push up here, we only have one clear leg. Now on a smaller picture, you know, you can see a leg up there and then a little break and a second leg up before pushing lower, but that's too small picture. I would wanna see two clear legs up before entering short, not, you know, two small legs that fit within a thin channel. And so it's just not good enough there. I don't like a short there, but it does end up pushing on lower and we reach this measured move here. So these measured move levels are very important to understand. You know, price is attracted to them. Price repels from them once they're reached. They're very, very important to understand. So right as this measured move is met, price pushes up. And as you can see, you can see there's two small legs there to the overnight low, and then we get a perfect push off of that. So that's another example of the of the overnight levels acting as magnets. As soon as it's met to the tick, price pushes off of it. Now this, like I was mentioning right here, this is just one leg on a bigger picture. You know, it's not two clear legs, it's really just one push up. We get a break and we start making a second leg up. Now, with those bodies, they they match right there. This is basically a double bottom. You know, that's where that, this is where the bodies closed. It kind of just spiked out to reach that measured move, but clearly there's some kind of level right here. And so we push on up from the double bottom. We reach the overnight low again, except we had the, except this time we actually push back in and close in. Now notice that before we push up here, you know, there's no good setup here, but it does form a little failed second entry. You know, from this low, we have this push up and then two legs down. So first entry short, second entry short failure. It's a little bit difficult to see, but clearly after that spike up, we have two legs down and then a push to a new high. And so again, you know, even though you can see those two legs up right there on an even bigger picture, it is still one leg. Now I'm gonna redraw the smaller measured move for a second, just for, just to show a visual of it. We have these two legs up, and then it doesn't quite reach the measured move, it has quite a bit left, and then price starts reversing back down. We get two legs down. Now, again, this is clearly one leg on a bigger picture, and so what you're getting is, after the after the measured move, res sorry, this is, sorry about this, there we go. After the measured move reversal, you know, from this measured move down here, our price pushes up. This is a very sharp reversal from this measured move. It's indicating that, you know, price is now bullish. It was bearish, but after that measured move is met, now it's bullish and we're fading back in. You know, when you break out of the overnight low level, you can expect price to attempt to fade just like in a range. And so when we push up here and then get two legs back, this is a two-legged break from this uptrend right here. Now, again, I'm always going to mention this. On a bigger picture, this is one leg, but you have to play it one level at a time. You get the break in the form of two legs, Price doesn't reach the measured move, it's held up by the overnight low, and then price pushes on up, and then we get this bullish bar holding above the EMA and above the overnight low. Now, the setup itself, honestly, is not very great. It's more about the context. Big picture reversal right off that measured move, very sharp, two-legged break, and then it's holding back above, and you have room before this high up here. Because 
another important thing is it's not just about entering or I mean exiting before this high. It's also about the fact that once it pushes past that high, this uptrend has now played out with a break in new high. And so that often leads to reversals. And notice that right as it makes the new high, price attempts to reverse. Now, again, we have very good big picture context, and so it ends up not reversing all the way. It just, you know, goes to the to the EMA and then pushes on higher. But, you know, it's just important to understand context versus setup. You know, again, this is pretty chopped up right here. You can still see what's going on. You know, after the two-legged retest, you can kind of see the failed second entry in there um, with those bodies. We push up push lower, another push up. But really, it's not about the failed second entry. This is not a good looking setup. It's about the big picture context. And so, you know, from here, it's not good. But from here, you clearly are expecting a new high. You have a two legged break. And again, you just got off this major measured move reversal. So I hope that's clear right there. Now we push on up. We, <clears throat> excuse me. After we push on up here, we get these two legs. Notice that we have two legs to a new high. And so I'm going to put that measured move back really quick. As soon as this measured move is met right here, price attempts to reverse. Now it ends up holding on the EMA. You can see there's a second entry there. There's no good bar. Also, you know, this first leg is way bigger than that second leg. So it's really just not ideal, especially when it's at a common reversal area, which is the measured move being met. You know, the uptrend played out with two measured legs to a new high. Very common to reverse straight from there. And if you get a not very good second entry with a bad bar, it's really just not worth taking. Even when it pushes up here, you know, at that point, you're almost going to be pushing it past that high right there. You know, again, which is a measured move level. So it's just not ideal. And as price pushes up here, reaches this, makes a double top at this measured move. And then we finally get a more clear reversal. And so anyway... Just want to show here these two legs, even though it's clearly two legs pushing up to a new high, there's still one leg on a bigger picture. And so I'm going to remove them just to unclutter. Notice that we have these two legs up right here and then price starts to reverse. So you really just got to learn to spot it in real time. Um, you know, I understand it can be difficult because you're getting your attempts and then the reversal after the two attempts. but. On a bigger picture, you can clearly see that's two legs up right there. Now, after that reversal attempt, you know, there's no way to get long here on the retest of the overnight low. You get a very perfect retest. You know, it just wicks through and then closes right on it before taking off. But after this new high, you only have one leg down. You don't have a, two, a clear two-legged move down. You only have one leg. It's just not ideal, especially with a sharp reversal because, again, at a reversal area, you you can expect two attempts to reverse because you can expect two attempts for everything, two attempts to reach a magnet, two attempts to reach a trend line. You know, that's how second entries form. And so when you're at a reversal area and you only get one attempt to reverse, it could very easily tick higher, you know, push a bit higher actually, and then get your second leg down. So it's just not worth entering on anything here. But anyway, we push on up and then this measured move is finally met. You know, it's not in the form of a perfect two legs, you know, we get that reversal attempt, but this reversal attempt failed. We push on up, reach that measured move, and as soon as we reach it, we start to push back down. It gets a little bit choppy at first. We don't get a clear reversal pattern. You know, right here, you can say first entry long, second entry long, failure. However, at that point, you do already have two legs down, and so that's really just not ideal for a reversal. You get some very clear reaction to that measured move, and then it just goes straight sideways. Really nothing to take there. But anyway, we continue on lower. We reach this um, trend line right here. But, you know, it's blocked by this other trend line right here. Even though you have the overshoot, overshoots lead to breaks. But it's blocked by this right here. It's just one sharp leg down. You know, if we had gotten two clear legs, like say from here, we have a push down, another push down, and then a push back up, and then another push down, making a second entry overshooting, then, you know, it could be a much different story. Obviously, I'd want it to close out of the STT still, um, which means short-term trend line, by the way. Um, but, you know, we just don't get that. We only get the one sharp leg down. Um, so really nothing to take there. We push on up and make a second leg down. So and even though there's like multiple legs here, like, you know, first entry, second entry, this is where it really spikes down. So that's why I'm referring, you know, from to it from here. And so we have this first leg down, break, we start making a second leg, and then as it makes that new low, so you have this little downtrend right here, downtrend, break, new low, price attempts to reverse. Now, obviously, you don't want to enter long right there. You're not holding on the wider trend line anymore. 
it's really just not ideal. And then by the time you're closing back in, you obviously don't want to enter right into this trend line right there. So really nothing to take. We push up a little bit and now we're getting another retest. And so we have this wider channel here, you know, it has three bounces off the lows. It has four bounces off the highs. It's pretty valid. You know, it looks very clear. Um, we're getting a break. We can expect price to attempt a new high. And so getting a retest of the overnight low is a great place to look to make a new high. You know, it's a great place to look for a long. We could push up into a failed second entry to look to make a new high. So, you know, that's what I'm kind of hoping happens. We push up above the EMA, two clear legs back, holding above. That could give us a great long. And so anyway, I'm gonna switch over to the NQ now. So this is the NQ. We have the overnight high up here, overnight low down here. Now I wanna talk about this area really quick. So I'm gonna jump back to the ES for a second. So this, this trade right here was around the exact time as this one, they were like 20 seconds apart. Um, so notice here, I, I did play them differently. So on the ES trade, we have these two legs down. So uptrend with a two-legged break, expecting a new high at a reversal area, just like I explained earlier. Now compare that to the NQ. The measured move wasn't met, but we are still getting a very clear reversal. Now, from this push up here, we don't have a clear two-legged move down. Okay, and so you'll notice that I played the stops differently. The stop on the NQ is all the way below the swing here, but over on the ES, the stop is below this one, not all the way below. And that's because we have a better, smaller picture setup. You know, overall, on the NQ here, you know, we have this clear reversal, looking to get along with it, it's, it's holding. I, we can expect a second big picture leg up, but the truth is starting from here, we don't have a clear failed second entry. We don't have a clear uptrend with a two-legged break. Like over on the ES, we have an uptrend with a two-legged break. And so I like this smaller picture setup, which is why I didn't have the stops all the way down there. Um, you know, it also matched with keeping it within that high right there. And so over on the NQ, it was more of a higher low setup, a very big picture higher low setup from here. So, you know, push up and then this whole area is the higher low. Um, you know, it just didn't set up perfectly, but you know, clearly we were at a major reversal area. It was not wanting to get below. And right here, we do have first entry short, second entry short failure, and then rush above the EMA. So, you know, it doesn't have the, you know, this right here, but it does have a little bit better of an even smaller picture. Um, setup but again that's not really what the trade is based on it's based on the big picture reversal and then a you know price unable to get back below the overnight low and so i like that right there we push on up we start making the second big picture leg up which hold on let me step back for a sec i almost started you know doing it straight from here so back over here again i started trading around eight both markets right here before this drop now notice we have this downtrend and then this is a two-legged break right here because we have these two attempts to reverse. Again, we just formed the overnight low right there. Now, kind of like how I was mentioning on the ES, after those two pushes up, I didn't want to just straight away take a short because the measured move isn't met combined with we just came off the overnight low. Um, but what we end up getting on the NQ is from here, we get a failed second entry. We have first entry long, second entry long, failure with a clear bearish bar right there below the EMA still expecting a new low for this or expecting a second leg down for this move here so downtrend two like a break push to a new low in the form of a second major leg and so this looks great right here i really like this trade it just on the es we didn't quite get anything you know we just dropped on down and then by the time that we're correcting um you know it's reached the overnight low and then it's just one leg up so back to the nq um you know it just set up way better here so anyway, we push on lower here, we get this second leg. So now we have these clear two legs down. It doesn't quite reach the measured move, but we do get that sharp reversal. Um, I kind of explained this area already, so I'll just kind of move on. You know, we had these two legs up here, you know, two clear legs, um, almost measured. And then as those two legs are done forming, nearly reaching the measured move, we get a sharp reversal. But again, one leg on a bigger picture. We can expect price to attempt another leg up. Again, major reversal area, fading into the overnight, very great place to look for a long. So anyway, we push on up here, we get a couple smaller legs making up this bigger leg, and then right as that measured move is met, we get a perfect reversal off of it. So this is a great place to get a short if we form one, if we push below the EMA and get a failed second entry, you know, get a good reversal pattern, you know, say we push over here, a couple legs back, 
bearish bar pushing back below the EMA, we can definitely get a short there. But it just doesn't set up there. And so, anyway, we push on lower here, we hold on this trend line, you know, first it's like right there, and then as it kind of pierces through, you can just adjust it a little bit, um, push on up. Now again, this is a failed reversal, and so, you know, coming off that measured move, expecting a reversal, and since it held on this line right here, this is a failed reversal. But it is still a major leg, so when you push up here, you would want to see a failed second entry, and let me just draw it out really quick, so that way it's it's clear. So if you get this right here, okay, a failed second entry, pushing off this level right here, this two-legged move down here would act as the second attempt down from this high. So first attempt down, second attempt down. And since the two legs would be smaller, you know, it would basically act as downtrend break, first attempt lower, second attempt lower, failure. So you would have confluence from this downtrend right here, and that's what I would be looking for here. And obviously you would want to consider the fact that you do have this measured move level here, you don't want to enter right into it. But, you know, nothing happens here, it just takes on off, pushes straight through that previous level. Now, this right here, this area, is not the best for a short, it's, it looks good to look for one, but I'll, I'll just explain it when I get to it. So we push on up here, we start getting choppy, these highs are fitting, we start getting choppy at these highs, we start forming this range right here, then we push out, we break out of this little range right here, and also barely overshoot this channel, and then we get a sharp push down. So when you have an uptrend, you can look to get short to reach the other side, you just need room to the other side, you need to get in on the second leg to the other side, and that is what the idea is here. You push lower, we get this push back up. It's kind of like, a, it's, it is a failed second entry. It's not completely clear because it is still one leg right there. But again, it's one level at a time. You can still see we have a failed second entry with a good reaction and we're still expecting another leg down. Now, considering this measured move level right here and how sharp that reaction was on it was previously, you don't necessarily want to enter right into it. Now, it's very common for price to push through measured move levels and then get perfect retests on them to take off, you know, and continue the trend. And so, considering that, you, you wouldn't want to enter all the way down here on a stop, expecting it to push through, especially expecting it to push through the measured move as well. And so, this is a limit order trade, but you just don't get filled on it if you want to get out before um, this measured move level right here. So. You know, really nothing there, unfortunately. We push on lower, we have these two legs down. Notice price does attempt to reverse at that measured move slash this previous um, this previous level here, uh, but it ends up pushing on down. So now we have this wider channel here. Overshoot, overshoots commonly lead to breaks, but in this case here, it just continued on down right as it met that EMA. We have another attempt here, again, pushes down at the EMA. Nothing clear, even though you can see there's a second entry right there, it's just, you know, it's really one leg and it's very choppy, it's not ideal. Um, I would want to see it reach the other side of this channel right here. And so anyway, we push on lower, we haven't quite reached the med the overnight low at this point. Like on the ES we have, sometimes you're going to have a little bit different levels. You know, these two markets, they do follow each other, but not exactly, not perfectly. So, you know, don't like trade on one don't take a trade on one based on the other's price. You know, I know that people will do that in the ES and the NQ. Um, that's not something that I would say is a good idea. Um, so anyway, as you, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. So with overshoots, if it does not lead to a break and it just continues overshooting, you want to look to extend your lows and notice that these lows are fitting very well. And so just making a wider channel here, um, we could still get something off the other side, but we do have this uptrend, break, and we can expect price to attempt a new high. So we can still look to get short, you know, if this channel holds, but if we push lower and reach this overnight low, then that could offer us a great long entry. Even if we just push down from here and possibly even get a little overshoot if it happens soon enough. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it helped out and thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.